Calculation groups are one of the most powerful and time-saving features of Power BI. But what are they? There is a lot of hype around that. So in this video, let me explain what a calculation group is, how you can set one up in your Power BI workbook and how to use it. And I've got a very interesting tip about calculation groups towards the end of the video. So watch this whole advanced tutorial to up your Power BI game. Let's go. So here I have got a really simple model of my awesome chocolates data. I've got my shipment data and a calendar table. And in my shipment data, I have got some base measures. I've got my total boxes, total sales, total profit, total costs, total shipments and profit margin. In order to use calculation groups, previously we had to rely on a third party tool like tabular editor. But starting November 2023, we can create calculation groups natively in Power BI. You need to enable this feature though. So go to File, Options and Settings, Options, and click on Preview Features, and enable the Model Explorer and Calculation Group Authoring feature. This adds a different way of looking at your data model. It also enables another feature called Semantic Model, which is a collection of all your tables, measures and various other things that help you in the data modeling space. So once you enable restart your Power BI and ta-da, we are now able to create calculation groups. To create a calculation group, you will need to use the calculation group button in the home ribbon or in the modeling ribbon. So what is a calculation group? A calculation group is collection of your business logic to do certain calculations. For example, in my data model, I have got all of these base measures, total sales, total boxes, total costs, etc. And let's say I want to be able to, for all of them, calculate what the current value is, what is the year to date total is, what is the quarter to date total, what is year on year change and various other things. Now notice that for each of these measures, for example, let's take year to date total, the logic is same whether you're doing it for total sales, total costs or total shipments. So instead of creating dozens of measures that do all of these individual things, you can create a calculation group that combines all of the logic steps in one place and applies that uniformly across all your measures. So let me create a calculation group and then I'll explain how this works. When you click on calculation group, you are going to get a warning that says this will discourage implicit measures. As you're not going to be using implicit measures anyway, this is all good. So when you click S, it would have created a calculation group with a single calculation item. The calculation item logic will simply say selected measure. I'm going to rename this calculation item to current. You will understand what we are doing in a minute. Next, let's select the calculation group and we can name this. If you don't name it, it will be called calculation group or whatever it is, the default value. I'm going to call this as my and then in the my calculation group, calculation group column, I'm going to name this as my calcs. You can name these anything. It's a good idea to name them related to what is the underlying concept that you're going for. As this is a generic calculation group, my calcs is all right. Next up, we are going to select the calculation items and there is only one item right now. It's the current item and that points to the selected measure. You can select the calculation items bucket and then add other calculation items. Let's just add a few and then I'll explain what is going on behind scenes. So we'll add one more calculation item. This one, let's call this as YTD. And this is calculate selected measure dates YTD calendar date column. As you can see, what this does is for any selected measure, this is going to apply the dates YTD logic and tell you what is the year to date total for that measure is. We'll apply that and we will have now a current item and a year to date item. Let's add one more. This one we are going to call this as QTD and this is calculate 
selected measure dates QTD calendar date. You would have noticed by now that in each of these calculated items, we never specify what is the actual measure we are using. We'll always say selected measure. So think of this like a variable. Let's add one more. This one is last year value. And this is calculate selected measure, same period last year for my calendar date. So this is gonna, for whatever the selected measure is, get you the value as of last year for the same time period. So if I'm viewing this measure in a month context, I'll get the last year same month value. Let's add one more. This is YOY change. And this is selected measure minus calculate selected measure same period last year, calendar date. One annoying thing that I'm finding with this calculated group is we are not able to reuse another calculated item here. Maybe it's my understanding or maybe that's how it is set up, but you cannot refer to the existing calculated items right here. So you'll have to write the entire logic again. And then let's add one more calculation item. You can either use this new calculated item or you can right click on calculated items and then say new calculation item. And this one is YOY percentage. You can write the measure logic or you can get a bit more detailed and use variables and all of that in the DAX. So I'm going to define variables where CV is my selected measure where PV is calculate selected measure, same period last year, calendar date, and where diff is CV minus PV. And then I want to return divide diff with PV. So this is gonna tell you what is the year on year change is for any selected measure. Again, we'll apply and that's it. We have created our calculated group that has all these various calculations. Nowhere in this process, you will say what is the actual measure we are using. Everything refers to selected measure. Now that we have defined it, we can go back to the visuals and create a visual to see our calculation group in action. For something like calculation groups, a matrix visual works beautifully. So I'm going to set up a matrix visual, expand this out. And in this, I want to see month on the rows. So I'll tell, take my calendar and then I'll put year and month into this and then structure it so that we will have this kind of a hierarchical view. Now for each month year combination that I have in 2022 and 23, I would like to see all the values. What is the current value? What is the last year value, year to date value, quarter to date value, year on year change, etc. for any measure. So I'm going to select the measure, let's just say total sales and put that into values. Initially, we're only going to get one total sales for all of these things. And this is self-explanatory. Again, a reminder, total sales is the sum of my shipment table sales column. Now in the columns area, I'm going to take my calcs and put the my calcs column here. Instantly, I'll get all the current values. So what is the value in that month, January 2022? For example, what is the last year value? Though as we don't have the data prior to 2022, all of these will be blank. But here is my 1.405, which is same as that value. What is the quarter to date totals? You can see these numbers go up in three months at a time. And YOY change and YOY percentage and year to date totals. The measures in the calculated group take the formatting of the underlying base measure. So in this case, the base measure is my total sales. So whatever is the original formatting that I set for total sales, which is the currency formatting, that's how this will look. But if I were to put something else, so for example, I'm going to take out total sales and put total shipments here. As the total shipments is in numbers, every other measure in the calculated group is also going to be in the number format. 
if I take that out and if I put my profit margin, all of these numbers will be in percentage formatting. Let's go back to total sales and let me share one additional bonus trick. While this formatting is all good, I don't want the dollar formatting for my year on year percentage. I want this to be a percentage. To set individual formatting for an item in the calculated group, you'll need to go back to the calculated group editing screen. So you go to the model view and then from here you can pick the semantic model and select the item that you want to edit. So YOY percentage. And here you can also enable a dynamic format string. So when you enable, you're gonna get a prompt in the formula bar asking you what format you want to use. For this particular one, I want to use a 0.0, .0 percentage formatting. That's the formatting code for percentages. And when you enable that, that would be the formatting for the year on year percentages. Now, when I go here, you'll see that that formatting also changes. Let's say you like this, but you don't want to see year to date all the way in the end here. You want to see it right after the current value. You can also go back to the model view and edit the calculation items list. And from here, you can rearrange that. So just select YTD and drag and drop it wherever you want. So I'm going to see YTD and then QTD, then last year YOY change and YOY percentage. Now, when I come back to the report view, that is how those items are displayed. So that is what a calculation group does. It lets you automate a lot of repetitive calculations and apply them uniformly across all your measures in the model. Did you like it? Now, do you know that you can take this idea and combine that with another powerful idea in Power BI field parameters to create an interactive report like this where for any measure, so whether it is total sales, total profit, total shipments or profit margin, I can see my calculated group all displayed out nicely. I got a video about field parameters on my channel. Check it out. It should show up somewhere here. I'll catch you there. Bye.